Okay then, so in this video we're going to be discussing what are void star pointers, how do you use void pointers in C. Now this really is part of my series on pointers in C. The first video is called Using Pointers in C. It's been quite a popular video here on this channel. If you are unsure about how you use pointers in C, I do recommend that video of mine. But just as a quick recap, pointer is a variable holding the address in memory of something. And that something could be another variable, a structure, or a chunk of memory. So here, for example, is a small piece of C code. We're gonna run this in a moment. So here we are defining an integer. The variable is called x, and we've given it the value of 42. Fairly simple. But this is a bit more complicated. Here we've got an int star. That means it's a pointer, and I've called it to help us understand pointer to x. Okay, and its value is ampersand x means the address of x so this here is x and it's 42 this here is the address of x wherever that is in memory and then we can actually print out pointer to x using p which means give me a pointer and what we're expecting is a hexadecimal number fairly large because that's the address in memory where x is actually stored okay i've gone ahead and compiled this so let's run the program we're expecting the address to come out there you go, big hexadecimal number. So that's the address of the variable x and it's stored inside of pointer to x. Now you can point to more things than just a variable or an integer and I have a follow-up video called pointers to structures in C. So again, if you're learning about pointers, if you want to refresh on pointers, that would be your next place of call. However, carrying on with our pointers recap, after you have a pointer to something, the next thing is to use dereferencing. That means to follow the pointer and use the value pointed to the value in the memory at the address uh, in the pointer. Dereferencing, and then I've got example here, star, and then the name of the pointer, uses the pointer's type to know how many bytes to read. And this is the important thing, especially now when we're coming on about void star pointers. This means that dereferencing a char star, and a char is just a character, so it's one byte long, is different to dereferencing an int star, which could be, let's say, four bytes long, depending on the system that you're using. So it uses the type of the pointer to know how much memory it should read at the other end to actually get the value that it needs. So a char is stored in one byte, a structure would be stored in many more bytes, an integer maybe four bytes, and so on. So here's a quick bit of code. Again, we've got an integer x, we've set to 42. We've got a character c, which we've set to the capital letter a. Now we've got a pointer, int star, so it's a pointer, pointer one, and it's the address of x, so that will point to the memory that's holding the 42. And we've got a char star, a pointer, pointer two, holding the address of this letter A, where C is. Now, if you do a print F of a pointer one and then you dereference it, so you put the star in front of it. Remember in that previous slide, let's just go back to it. Here, we didn't put a star in front of pointer to X. We actually wanted to know the value of pointer to X. Here, we want to know dereference it. So what is at the address pointed to by pointer one, but because this is an integer, it will know to read the four bytes, let's say, that it needs for an integer. Because this is a character, it will know to only read one byte. So even though we're just saying star pointer one, star pointer two, they look similar uh, here at this point of dereferencing, actually, because one's an int and one's a char, that makes a big difference. Okay, so here we'd expect 42 and A to be printed out. So let's just run that. And there you go, 42 and A. Now, one question I get a lot under my uh, videos on pointers, particularly those two that I've just uh, shown you earlier on, is people say, well, what do you need a pointer for? I can just, you know, send A or C or uh, X just as a value. And that's absolutely true. Small values like an integer or a character can be passed by value quite cheaply. But imagine if you loaded in a two, three, four, five megabyte image, a JPEG file, a PNG file that you're going to do some processing on, and then you call a function to say, blur this or, you know, rotate this. Are you going to copy around four or five megabytes of memory every time you call a function to do something? Of course you're not. You're going to pass a pointer to it. So although you've got this idea that if you've got integer x and you can just say do something, okay, and you just pass in 
the value if this was something here that was loaded from the file a database even an image file a movie who knows how many megabytes a large language model who knows how many megabytes you're not going to pass copy the whole thing over in this function you're going to pass a pointer and that's the power of pointers you can point leave something in memory and then just reference it and say actually i'm dealing with that chunk of memory go and do the work on that so what is a void star pointer a void star pointer is a pointer with no associated data types it's not a char star it's not an int star or whatever it can hold the address of any data type and then later it can be typecast to another pointer type so here's back to our first example i've got integer x 42 i've now got void star pointer 1 is the address of x so it's pointing to that 42 and now again i can print out pointer 1 okay and it'll give me another hexadecimal address like we had in our earlier example okay so here we're expecting the address again even though it's a void star we're still expecting that big hexadecimal number there you go just like previously but if you want to use the value that's inside of a void star, you cannot dereference it directly. You must first typecast it so that the compiler knows how many bytes is it dealing with at the other end. Is this a structure? Is this an integer? Is this a character? And they could all have very, very different sizes. So it needs to know how many bytes it needs to be dealing with. So, for example, here I've got my integer again, 42. I've got a void star pointer pointing to it and there's the address of it but before i use it here to print out 42 the value there i have to first of all cast it to an integer star so i'm saying this void star pointer is actually an int star pointer a pointer to an integer and then i dereference it so cast first then dereference read it from right to left pointer cast it to be an integer pointer and then dereference it okay now we're casting it to the integer pointer so we should run that and get 42 and there we do but why do they even exist then if you have to typecast them all the time what's the point of the existing well basically they they enable generic pointers when you're pointing to something that you don't know what it is an arbitrary type you're not sure what it is and the classic example is the memory allocation functions inside the standard c library so when you do malloc or free or calloc or whatever Okay, you don't know what it's pointing to. Is it pointing to some integers? Is it pointing to some structures? Is it pointing to some characters? You don't know what it is. So you just give it returns a void star and then you need to deal with it. It's just saying, here's a chunk of memory. I don't know what you're going to put in that memory. Are you putting in integers? Fine. Are you putting in characters? Fine. But I don't know at this point. So I'm just going to give you back the chunk of memory and address to it. You deal with the types yourself inside the C programming language. So I've got a whole video on malloc free and how to avoid buffer overruns with those again here on this channel and here's an example very simple so here we're using malloc we're going to allocate 64 bytes and it will come back as a void star but i'm actually going to say no i want you to use it as a char star so you cast it to a pointer to a character which we then put into s here we can then copy over hello world into that chunk of memory dealing all now with characters and finally we can print it out so if we run that we're going to get hello world okay so we allocated some memory and then we put the string in it and so we should get hello world printed out and that's it okay that's it my name is gary sims i do hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up and if you enjoyed this video then please stick around by subscribing to the channel okay that's it I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.